we're here with Wizicom, and this is Jeff. Jeff, tell us what's going on today. We're here at NIB 2022. <laughs> I know. It's, it feels like so long. You know, we've been feel like playing this show a few times, and we're so excited to finally be here and be hanging out with you guys and talking product. Yes, sir. It's nice to be uh, back. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of things we've got this year. We'll, we'll start over on our, our main side. You know, some of this, you know, I've done a lot with Nick about our MRK-16, which is our, our flagship, you know, rack tray for our MCR-54. But this is... Just an example of what your, your workflow can work, look like with 64 channels of true diversity mic, uh, mic channel transmitters in 4RU with Dante, a remote antenna control, uh, fiber, RF over fiber, the, all the works, all the goods in one small package. Yeah, this is a sight to behold. And so how are you interlinking everything, just um, cascading Dante out? Yeah, so... For the RF, all of the, the MCR-54 has uh, antenna ports built into the back of it. So all of the RF for the receivers come in through the back. And then on the back side of the MRK, as you'll see, uh, the Dante lets you work in switched mode. So you can loop from one to the other. And then recently added is this SFP port on the top, which lets you connect from your switch via fiber to your MRK and loop through. So the only connection you have to have from your MRK to your your system is a single uh, strand of fiber. This is a super slick setup, man. Very, very slick. Yeah. Um, so talk to me then in terms of the transmitters and that you're going to be pairing with this. Uh, you got something new here as well? Yeah, so we have a few accessories and things. We'll start with the app. We are yep. working on and coming out soon, very soon, with an app for remote control. So right now I've got six MTP60s set up, enabled, turned on. We can go into any one of them and uh, grab and manage all of our features, settings, toggle our RF, our record, and you know, whether you're doing one or the other. And it'll also allow you to go back to your, you know, all of your transmitters together and bulk, bulk manage settings, like turning on the uh, RF transmit or turning on the record if you're in record or transmit. Right, so then this just corresponded. This just corresponded to these six transmitters. Okay. So I just that. turned all of their RF carriers on. Okay, then I, I saw that reflected here on the receivers as well? Some of them, yeah. Okay, yeah. copy that. Uh, only <laughs> six, out of, six out of 64. We can do what we can. <laughs> do what we can. Um, added to the line is our new ADT60, which okay. is a very nice little battery eliminator for the MTP60. All right, we and that over, let me see. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there we go. So the way this works in, in difference from our previous, you know, generation of transmitters, on the bottom of the MTP60, there's battery contacts. So it allows you for a quick, quick plug on uh, to that, as well as for some uh, drop-in chargers that are going to be released uh, a little later this year as well. Very nice. Very nice. And this, you know, just for the applications to drop it as a, a transmitter out of your bag. Or what we're also very excited about is our new PHA60. All right, I was a fan of the previous model of this, so tell, me, tell us more about this. So this one is a new, a new approach to how we've done this. So it's racks, uh, slots right on the back and attaches to your, your favorite boom pole. Lovely. And this does 48 volt, as you would expect, but it also has a setting to toggle to 12 volt mode. Because there's some of the mic manufacturers are, are looking at how you know portable audio location sound is run, and you know 48 volt mics take a lot more consumption, a lot more battery power. So if you can do 12 volts, you get a lot more <laughs> out of your day. Right. That's um, awesome. Um, so then, in terms of this on a boom pole as it's designed, um, are there any other additional accessories that are available or going to be available? You know, uh, uh, maybe like a rain protection, things like that? There's, yeah, there's some things we're looking at for, for waterproofing it and, and, you know, as, you know, to, to protect it on your pole. Okay. And this is uh, IP rated as well. Uh, it, uh, I believe it will. This, one, this one's still physical, just a prototype, but we'll, we'll have the IP rating okay. for it. Um, so then uh, we this, have the, um, this one, we're, we're really proud of this box. So we, we kind of announced with the MRK-16 that it has a fiber input on the back of it. And we've talked about that in the past, that you can take your fiber inputs. Right. Up till now, our, our fiber solution has been our MFL, which is a 1RU, you know, mo very, very powerful device. So we took that and kind of boiled it down to the essentials which is antenna in to fiber out. And so this works with the MRK that you can extend your coverage with a single strand of fiber. And in many of the larger productions, production is already running a multi-core or a multi-strand tactical fiber for cameras. Right. So you can take one strand. Just link into that, yeah. So that works as a 
standalone with a transmitter receiver or straight into your MRK. Beautiful. So uh, anything else that you want to help us cover over? Or anything uh, any upcoming new that we should know about? <laughs> This, uh, we, we, you know, WYSICOM's always uh, working and developing great and powerful things. We've got a lot of exciting projects on the roadmap, but uh, for now, the, the, the BFL is what we're calling it. The BFL is really our, our product that we're, we're proud to show off at this show. I mean, we're proud of all of them, but this is a really cool new, uh, new approach to doing larger scale RF deployments. Okay, excellent. All right, uh, so um, if that's uh, it in terms of product base, so we'll take some questions. Uh, do we have any uh, questions in the chat, Joe? We do. Uh, Jesse's asking, are you able to demo the transmitter gain adjustment from the mobile app? Yes, uh, demoing the gain adjustment from the mobile app. For that, I'll, let me invite, if it's all right, I'm going to invite my, uh, yeah. my friend Leslie Lello. <laughs> Le uh, Leslie's from our, our uh, Hello, company in Italy, so I'll let him show off our yeah, app. Yeah, Leslie, come on, jump uh, in, man. Yeah, let me let Hi. him. Hi, everyone. Yeah, they want to talk about uh, showing off the gain adjustment on a transmitter yeah, sure. from the app. Yeah. Now we're connecting to the to the transmitter. Of course, we're moving from like the broadcasting view to the direct connection to the to the so this is the body bag. Just what you just need to do is just scanning here, picking your level and confirming. Because there's done. and there's two modes within the the Bluetooth management. So on this back back in the main screen, it's. The transmitter is broadcasting its status via the Bluetooth, but you're not paired. So it, it uses a little less consumption, a little less little yeah, exactly. management. So this is the idea also because since these units are using a long range Bluetooth module, which is 100 milliwatts power, this gives you the possibility since you're using, let's say, less packages of information to cover much longer distances when you are just monitoring the units. This is very important because you don't need to be connected to have like the general information about battery status, audio level, right. RF level, those kind of things. Then if you want to enter and modify something, of course, you're, you're jumping from the broadcasting to the connection. Um, to the connection mode, let's say. Uh, so this is, was the way we wanted to deal with that. Um, I, I'm sure Jeff maybe already mentioned, but the idea will be in future to use also the, the same module, which is already integrated in the MRK16. So we're going to have 100 milliwatts there here for the Bluetooth, plus another 100 milliwatts there. So the connectivity will be much, much longer than you normally get with this kind of solution or Bluetooth solutions. I say that other, other similar packs with the Bluetooth that normally work at 6 milliwatts. So this gives you a little bit the difference that you can have in terms of performances and coverage. Yeah, that gives you a lot of uh, agility there for your configuration, especially if you need that uh, extended range. Yeah, 100%. Absolutely. Um, do we have any further questions? Joe, do we have any further questions in front of the chat? Uh, yes, we do. Uh, wondering what is the range of the app? So the range of the app is, is really dependent on, you know, of course it's a little bit dependent on the situation, but a lot of the, a lot of the Bluetooth devices you, you see out in, in production and applications are class two, as Liz was mentioned. So those would be about six milliwatt Bluetooth five. These are class ones. This is a hundred milliwatt Bluetooth five. In, in the testing we've done, uh, I mean, we're easily getting, getting a hundred, hundred meters easily. Yeah, well, hundred meters. Hundred meters. meters in broadcasting, which is, Pretty, feet. pretty excellent. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 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 three, conversion. Three, three, 300 feet, I think. Yeah. Uh, Only 300 feet, yeah. Yeah. And in, connect, in connection, you still got about 30 meters, so it's like 100 feet. Okay. Pretty much. So that's the ranges. Everything's going to be improved. And using the mobile phone, which doesn't have, of course, the, like yeah. a high power transmitter. Right. So this is this is the thing. Why This is why I was mentioning the fact we're going to use the same thing also here when you're building up your, your own setup with two high power Bluetooth transmission at the same time. That's going to improve massively all the, all the coverage. Because yeah, your, your range will be directly impacted by the device you're communicating with. Exactly. Your, phone, your phone would be a class two device, class so your, two. your transmit from your phone is limited. Right. But from, from your MTP to your MCR or your MRK is all high power class one. Exactly, okay. Um, what if you wanted to do like a redactive setup and only have maybe eight channels, 12 channels kind of out? Yeah, the, the MRK, is, it's, it's modular. So with the MRK, all you do is you just add one, you know, however many receivers at a time. You could do four channels in this. You could do the MCR 54 duals, and you could do any mix match and have any number of, you know, any number of configuration. Okay, so this is the perfect happy meal. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. All right, 
Joe, do we have any further questions? Yeah, we got a couple questions. Um, which WYSICOM antenna is best for the digital receivers? So, the, the question is which, which antenna is best for the digital receivers? So, the WYSICOM system is, is all digital processing, uh, but it's an analog carrier. So as far as which antenna is best, we, we have a lot of great antennas. It, it's very dependent on your application. So we look at an ADFA, uh, which is an Omni version of the LFA, which both have the same built-in uh, attenuator and, and amplifier, so it'll do a gain range of minus 12 to plus 27. And they've got a lot of different filter options within it. RF on its own tends to be fairly uh, Omni brand, so you can do a digital transmitter or an analog transmitter off the same antenna. It's going to be application based. Okay. So uh, really, then, um, if I needed to have more a reality kind of setup where I have talent roaming essentially in a circle around me, potentially or a semicircle, yeah. I, an Omni would be more um, more conducive yeah. to that setup. Then. Yeah, it would. And and, and personally, I I choose Omnis more often than than not. Okay. Just, just for the, the flexibility and the versatility. I mean, e even the, the LFA has a beam width of 100, I think 140 40 degrees. Um, so it's, it's a... For indoor applications, the, the Omni, of course, is, is capable of using all the refraction caused by the walls. So it mu makes much more sense to have an antenna that is basically grabbing in any direction rather than one that is grabbing pretty much in just in one. Okay, so maybe there's something to take to heart there. Another question is, Will there be a um, single battery version of the MPT60? So there's there's a lot of projects we're developing and working on. In the meantime, uh, you know, we these work with AA batteries, or you could do it with a single, uh, sorry, single battery uh, lithium rechargeable. So you get a solid 10 hours out of out of this. But that's uh, you know, there's a lot of projects we're working on and developing. Ah, uh, yes. You know, there's a lot of exciting projects on the roadmap. Potentially down the line, essentially. Okay. All right, we'll take that. Uh, what's our next question then? So ne another question is, uh, can you listen on the app or is it purely visual? At, at this stage, and, and I believe in the, the future planning, it will just be for for monitor and control. Okay. Because um, the, the the Bluetooth protocol over over or audio protocol over Bluetooth is 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 a bit of a different different thing. So it's all configured just to uh, just to control and monitor. Okay. Uh, visually, sorry, monitor visually, that is. All right, so if we needed to monitor it, we'd have to pull that out of the receiver or the, the mixer yeah. itself. Um, Next question. Is the PHA60 true 48 volt? Yeah, it can actually switch from 48 to 12. There is a possibility by a preset that we included into the MTP60 to be able to work at 12 volts to be compatible with the new shotgun mics, which are actually working, they just require that amount of power. And there's going to be a, an LED on the on the side of the unit, which maybe this one doesn't have it yet because the previous version, but the newer one has it. There is an LED which is, uh, I think, yellow in case it's uh, 12 volts and green if it's 48. Okay, so just so somewhere here on the side of the unit. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You just change it through the preset when you do when you change the wiring from here. Mm -hmm. You just, just go through the menu and select whether you're working with a 48 volts mic or 12 volts mic. So that just allows you to have a, a quick glance knowing at yeah. what voltage and of course you're it using. It changes also the battery consumption. This is why the reason we like to adapt not only for that kind of shot, um, shotgun mics, but also for the fact that it reduces the, the power consumption of the unit. So okay, it's yeah, so longer. You could have extended life power as yeah. a result of that. Very nice. Uh, any further questions? Questions? Yes, uh, now that the MRK and the MCR54s are fully out and support 940 to 960, can we expect to see a dual band 4G stop version of the LFA antennas? So, yes. So the, the, the question is for Leslie, it's, it's can we, are we expecting to see the 4G stop version? So, of, of the LFA, I'm sorry. Uh, so the, there's a few filter options for the the LFA and ADFA, it's all, all basically same filter internally. Um, and it's something we're, we're working on coming out with a version that'll let you switch to a, a setting that will have a filter of, you know, 472, 6, wherever you want to end that, and 940, 960 at the same time. Okay. It's something that I, I know and I, we, we've spoken about this and with the, with the R&D team on on having that as, as available. And, and I don't have an exact date on that, but it is something uh, we are working on and, and so in terms of the tunability for that um, between the two uh, gaps in the megahertz. So if I needed to, let's say maybe tune to just like 490 
to 5.30 or 5.40, would that be an option? So it, it would be an option. We're still finalizing the specifics on it because it's right now with the LFA or the NFA, it's, it's set to either a wideband, which would give you low pass and high pass at different intervals, okay. or a tunable 40 meg electronically sweepable band pass, Jeez. or the 940, 960 saw filter. So it's trying to, to get the antenna to do a section of wideband 470 to something and 940 at 960 to cut out all of the extra TV and cellular phone data in the middle of that. So it sounds like the 40 megahertz selection may be the more favorable option then? In, in the meantime, and we're, we're, yeah, we're, we're working on that antenna to come out and, and support, because the, the, the MTP60 is multiband. Everything we're doing is multiband. So you can do 470 through 960 on one pack with one receiver. And so we're, we're working on the antenna filtering to support that okay. as yeah. well. Excellent, excellent. So that is coming soon. Uh, do we have any additional questions? Uh, no additional questions. All right, no more additional questions. Uh, any any more lovely factoids that you guys would love to just drop on us before we uh, we wrap this up today? Or um, I think we pretty much yeah. save everything. I was I couldn't hear when you were talking about the back of the MRK, but I'm sure you already covered all the key points. Yeah. Right, so. I think oh, pretty yeah. much this is, I mean, this is the new the new range of products is like the first step we're moving in the direction of, you know, taking the all the know-how that Visicom developed uh, through the years in doing, working in really big sport events like Formula One, MotoGP and on and on. And the idea is, okay, just take everything we know from that and just reducing the dimensions. Jeff told you about the new boosters with the fiber, the fiber connection on the back which seems to be something complicated, but at the end of the story, it's much easier and much more user-friendly sometimes than just running huge thick Cox cables up and down the fields and with a All huge right. loss. So the idea is going smaller and smaller without losing any sort of reliability and flexibility. Yeah. Right, right, We're less is more. Increasing that. Yeah. So we'll be excited to see more uh, in the future. <laughs> 100 foot runs of Cat 5 instead of uh, <laughs> Coax. All right, well, if that's all for uh, WYSICOM, we appreciate you, Jeff. We appreciate you, yeah. Leslie. Thank you um, very much. Thanks yeah, very thanks much. Thanks for having us.